What's up guys? So in today's video, we're gonna start working on the S10 again. Ordered this boost gauge. I got this MSD two-step part, 8733. We're gonna get into that and some other things that we're gonna do to get it ready for the street. So uh, let's get to work. <laughs> Alright, before we get to doing anything, I thought I'd show you the parts that I purchased, some of them over the winter and whatnot to get the truck fixed up the way I want it. So this is what I bought. I ended up ordering this um, B&M 4L80, 4L60, etc. All the bracketry. What I ended up doing is I have a stock shifter out of like a third gen Camaro in there, a four speed shifter. Cable wouldn't work. If you've seen the previous video, I ended up taking the cable out of Mike's Sonic Stang, which obviously he's gonna need back. So I also ordered a cable, B&M shifter cable. And so I've kind of converted the stock shifter to work with an aftermarket cable and bracket system. But right now in there is just some brackets I kind of like made up, plus one of the brackets from his. So I actually bought the proper 4L80 bracketry and the cable. So as far as the transmission would know, it's like an aftermarket shifter. It just so happens the shifter on top is not. I also ordered this boost gauge. I have uh, Sun Pro gauges in the truck right now. I could show you. I wanted to get a matching one. I'm actually gonna take this gauge out the um, volt gauge because I don't even have it hooked up anyways. So I'm gonna pull the volt gauge out and my tack is also a white face. It's the same brand and everything. So I wanted it to match. So I ended up finding this one. I ordered one from AliExpress, a cheap one. Uh, and it never came, I never got it. They said they were gonna send me another one, they didn't. They said they're gonna refund my money, they didn't. It was only 12 bucks, so no big loss, but yeah, so I found this one, but Sun Pro got bought out by Bosch, so now it says Bosch on it, but otherwise it's exactly the same, so that's gotta go in. Uh, I ended up buying these Turbo Smart uh, oil feed filters. I got two for the Nova and I got one for the S10. Uh, a lot of guys say you don't need them. Some guys say you do need them or you could use them, whatever. I figured, you know what, they were 20, 25 bucks or something a piece. I figured I'd buy them, put them in, and uh, we'll do a little experiment. After like a month or a couple weeks, I'll pull it apart and see if there's anything in there. Any kind of dirt or anything or if it was a waste of money, but whatever. 25 bucks a piece, I can't see it being that big of a waste. And then what I ended up buying is these fittings. So. Originally, I thought I could use, I have a, a piece of dashboard braided here with ends on it. So my original plan was to put this line here and then the filter and then, but then this line will be way too long and it's gonna not really work. So what I bought for the Nova is these sort of a dash four to dash four female. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing with this was I'm gonna get another one of these and just put it in there and then put the filter will be like kind of right here so it'll be easy to access on the nova it'll be a little different it'll actually be behind the intakes so it'll be a little harder to get at but uh shouldn't be a big deal so then the other thing that i ended up buying which is going to go in the truck shortly is the uh, msd two-step there's the part number for anyone wants to know this is for ls engines uh, we put one on the uh, shit horse before you just unplug your coils and this goes in between on each side and then there's only like two wires i think one wire or the other wire you hook up one wire or the other wire basically so it just goes to like power so the way we did it on the shit horse is we wired it into the brake pedal through a toggle switch when you put the toggle switch on it engages that when well it arms it and then when you hit the brake it'll go into two-step mode and then when you release the brake it goes out of two-step mode I mean, I bought it for the truck more for fun, just to make two-step noises and stuff. Obviously, it's not a serious uh, race vehicle that I'm gonna be racing a whole bunch, but I figured out ah, what the heck. It'll be cool, it'll be fun, make some noises uh, with it and stuff. And when I do race it, it'll probably help it. But So yeah, that's what we're gonna get done and get this thing on the road. So that's kind of the main things I need to do on it. The only other issue that I'm kind of having with the truck is I have a little bit of a lifter tick on this side. And I think it's a lifter tick coming from like, it sounds like one lifter possibly. Uh, so what I ended up doing is I bought some of that um, Marvel mystery oil stuff. A lot of guys say it helps, it works. I don't know, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but we're gonna put that in there and try it. 
Worst case scenario, I'm gonna to have to pull the head off again and change out lifters or something, I don't know. But whatever, we'll get it done. It's early in the year. We're gonna definitely get this thing going and have it on the road. All right, so I think the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, put this boost gauge in. I have to take the center console out anyways to uh, do the shifter cable and stuff. So I think what I'm gonna do is at least get this mounted into the center console. It actually came with this oil line kind of tubing, you know, with the little, furl things but for that to work you have to i would have to drill and tap a hole in the intake which means taking the intake off which i don't really want to do so what i ended up finding was uh, a barb fitting like this which is obviously for a gauge that can just go to vacuum line i got a t fitting so i'm just going to t into where my map sensor comes um, into the truck i've been doing some reading and some guys say it works fine some guys say don't do it that way but I don't know, we'll try it and see. It says it might not give proper boost readings on the gauge, but I kind of can't see that. I'm pretty sure my car is teed in like that and it, I never had an issue with it. So uh, yeah, we're gonna do it like that. And I mean, if it doesn't work good, I can always change it. I can always uh, drill and tap or whatever. Then I would have to pull the intake off because I'd want to put it behind the intake where you can't really see it. So yeah, I'm gonna go in the truck and start taking that center console up. In order to take this out, I just have to take one bolt here simple I actually made this center console it's uh, all made out of steel and anybody who's new and doesn't know this is a 55 Chevy dash out of a 55 Chevy uh, sedan delivery actually uh, that I've custom put in here and all the uh, all these are steel uh, the speaker kick panels here those are all made of metal and of course all this is metal and the dash is also all metal and then there's just a couple bolts that go up in here that hold it to the dash. I'll undo those now. Yeah, so this is pretty simple. Oops, I can't. I don't know if I can do it with one hand here. You can probably see the uh, kind of the metal framework of how I made this. It's just out of this thin round bar here and then covered it with steel after. But uh, there's the gauges, so I just have to undo this one and put the other one in. And here's the... Uh, you guys can see that I could bring the light in here I guess but here's the shifter which is like I said out of a third gen but it has like um, reverse lights and neutral safety switch all built into it and then I just modified it here to run this like B&M style cable which also has to get undone I actually realized that it was the oil pressure gauge that line that was holding it so I took that off and now you can get a better look uh, kind of inside the center console how I made it I know it's nothing too exciting, but uh, anyone wants to make one, it's pretty simple. And that's how I did it. So I'm just going to take this gauge out and switch to the other one. So I think that looks pretty, uh, pretty cool. Perfect match, like I said, other than the name being different. I think that looks pretty nice. And I think I should be able to, uh, to see it okay. I mean, it's not the most critical gauge that, you know, you have to look at all the time. Just want to see how much boost it's making. You look down at it, you know. I'm really thinking about moving my air fuel gauge, which is right there, because I think it's too low. So I'm trying to figure out where I can move it that will look good and still function. Somewhere where I can see it more. I'm kind of thinking maybe on the other side on this part, I might actually might mold it right in somehow with a piece of tubing or something, weld it right in and then repaint it all and everything. I don't know. Yet to see on that, I have to figure out exactly where I want to put it, but. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do with this gauge right now. Like I said before, I have to take the shifter cable out and replace it and all that, and then this can go back in and get uh, buttoned up. Um, I also wanna do something with this. I put this chrome trim on here and it looks like crap, so I'll have to see if I can figure something else to do there with that. Well, I was just thinking, uh, I ended up taking the cable out and pushing it through the hole, and then I figured I can actually just put the new one through the hole, bolt it on, and then be able to put the shifter back in. So I got it out. The other cable obviously is still hooked up, but I can push it through the hole in the floor here. And what I had done is there's this little bracket here. I just drilled a hole and it just bolts on right there. And then it goes to the shifter and it's good. Perfect, okay, so now I can get all this hooked up and then put the center console back in and bolt it in and hook everything up and finish this uh, boost gauge install. I got her all done. I'll turn the lights on and show you how they look. 
that's all installed back in there. I ended up taking that chrome trim stuff off of here because actually without it, the shifter, uh, it slides a lot nicer. So I'm gonna leave it off. Uh, just gonna clean it up. I'll probably give it a repaint or whatever. I mean, it'd be nice to put some kind of like material cover over top maybe, I don't know. But for now, this is good, no big deal. And the cable's in there, and now we'll move on to something else. A couple days later, I'm back out in the garage. Gonna work on the S10 some more. Uh, I'll show you what happened af off camera. Um, if you watch the live stream that we usually have on Wednesdays, you would have seen that uh, we took the transmission for the shit horse apart. So this is the Turbo 350 for the shit horse. Uh, I was having some issues uh, making some kind of weird noise. I'll quickly take apart the, uh, I threw some parts in there just to get them out of the way, but let me quickly take this apart and I can show you the issue we were having. So there is this uh, center support goes in here and it has these teeth on it. And then these teeth sit inside these teeth right here. And uh, then there's a retaining ring that goes on. Uh, it's really hard to see, but it's pretty much chewed through like half of the ring that it's supposed to be supposed to kind of be like holding in there when you put it in there's a little spring that turns it slightly uh, but obviously something was making it turn even more and damaging it so it's pretty bad that this center support was actually jammed in there had a heck of a time getting it out so either now we're looking at getting another transmission case or um, they make a thing called a case saver we're hoping to get another one soon next couple days or else I'll try to order those case savers and uh, get the trans back together so we can get the engine and the shit horse. So what I'm going to do now on the S10 is I got this, which I showed already, the MSD two-step part 8733. I'm going to mount that in the truck today. So it's pretty simple. Here's your complete harness. That's the box. All you do is there's Two, two sets of wires here. Get this out of here. There's two sets of wires. They plug into the coils. So you unplug your coils and this goes in between. Pretty simple. And then after that, there's just one wire. There's two wires here. One of them is if you want to hook it up to activate off a of ground. The other one is if you want to activate off positive. So there's only a one wire hookup. So it's super, super easy. So far, the only thing I could say that I don't like, well, it doesn't really make sense to me, is they put the wiring harness coming out here the same side that the little plugs come out or little adjustment so you can adjust the two-step level i think it'd be better if it came out on this side the wiring i mean maybe that's just because that's how i'm mounting it or i want to mount it so but anyways i'll put you on the tripod and i'll show you how to hook this up it doesn't matter which one of these is left or right but one one sets longer so if you're going to be mounting your box over here you want to, I guess, you know, no matter which way, see if you mounted it over here and now the wires are in line with the engine, now your little dip switches or whatever, your little switches that you adjusted are inside making it hard to see. Now, if you mount it over here on this side of the engine, now you can get at your switches good, but now your wiring is here and it needs to go back here. Now, I think if the plugs were here, you know that would make more sense because then you could you could put it over here this way and your switches would point out or this way and they point out right but anyways that's not a huge deal there's enough wire to nicely wrap it so my plan is to mount it somewhere right about here i thought about hiding it somewhere so you can't see it putting it inside the truck maybe but there's nowhere really good to put it where i guess i could hide it under the dash and then when i want to adjust it I could just reach under there and do it. But then it's also running all these wires through the firewall, which I already have a ton running through that big grommet. So it would probably get a little tight there. So I think I'm just going to mount it out here. Kind of looks cool. Like I said, I kind of wanted to hide it. I have everything else hidden. The nice thing is that all this wiring loom is the same wiring loom I have the whole truck done with. So once I put it, the wiring down here, you know, throw a zip tie on it, it's going to blend in. The only issue I have with this is that this has to run along the back of the engine. Um, so 
So pretty much you just unplug this, plug this into it, and then plug this into here. Okay, so simple as that. The only issue I have with it is that trying to keep my engine compartment clean, now I have extra plugs. But I can kind of, I think I can kind of hide this plug down here. I could cut the wires. I don't really want to do that because I'm scared if I cut the wiring up, then the thing doesn't work for some reason. You know, wet MSD is not going to uh, honor the warranty because I've modified it. So, so yeah, I'm going to mount these wires and then we'll... Uh, We'll drill holes and mount the box. It's just a simple matter of running them through and plugging them in. Like I said, I'm trying to make it so that there's as little noticeable extra wiring here as possible. Which, if you don't care about that, then all the better for you. Okay. So, the nut plugs in there. The click and then now same thing so yeah simple as just this one goes into there and this one goes into there all right so i just put it where i wanted it i made three marks now i'll drill three holes and i already ran the wire the blue and white is the one for positive hookup so Hook, uh, activates with the power. Ran that into the harness and then into the hole in the in the truck. I figured I'd spare you guys me struggling trying to get it around all that stuff again. And then the way I'm going to run it is same as we did on the shit horse. I'm going to I'm going to hook it into the uh, with the toggle switch to arm it. I think I already said this, but toggle switch to arm it and uh, And then uh, it'll go to the brake pedal, and then you hold the brake pedal, it activates when you release the brake pedal. And there you go. Simple as that. So all I have to do now is wire in the switch inside the truck, and it's ready to go. The kit also came with this thing. I don't know if anyone's ever seen these before, but they're from a company called Posi Lock, I believe. So pretty much it's, remember those blue things that you put over a wire and then you squeeze it? And they never work good and they always corrode and get crappy well so this one it has like a little point on it you stick it over the wire this part and then you just tighten it up like this and it locks it in place and then on this end you just jam the wire in there like this tighten it and then it's on there it can't go anywhere so kind of a neat idea an upgrade of those old squishy blue ones that never really worked so i'm going to give it a try see if it works i have to tap into that uh, brake switch so uh, i'll get under there and do that now all right so i have it in there i ended up just putting the toggle switch right here with one of these fast and the furious toggle switch thingies so it's hidden out of the way but i can still reach it like this and turn it on so pretty much when you turn the switch on and then when I press the brake, then it's activated. And when I let off the brake, then it goes. So you could, the reason you need a switch is because if you went to do a burnout, then it would be on the two-step, which you don't want. So um, now all it's left to do is maybe give it a try and see if it works. All right, guys, so let's try this out. So I got the truck running. I don't have it on right now, so. I turned it down to like 2,000, so I'm gonna arm it now and then we'll see what it does. There you go guys, simple as that. I have it up on jack stands right now, so I can't really uh, build boost and stuff with it, but that's definitely how it works. It's pretty simple and uh, hopefully that'll help uh, make lots of cool boost noises and uh, help it build boost if it needs it. I ended up putting that uh, turbo oil feed filter on. There it is right there. So I just used this double female dash four to the filter and then the line on there. I kind of wish that I could keep it here except uh, 
radiator hose is in the way and it pushes up on it too much so I had to go like that but I think that's okay so I put this one on here and now I got to get another one of those fittings so I can put the other ones on the Nova but see the ones in the Nova they're gonna go back here because there's a T fitting back there where the two separate feed lines go so I'm gonna put those at the back so I'll, I gotta order another one of those fittings but uh, so yeah we got all that stuff done the next thing to do on it is the transmission pull that valve body out and adjust that band piston or whatever it's called so uh, we're gonna get to that in the next video that'd be it for today guys so uh, like always like comment subscribe share with your friends we'll check you later